Greetings friends! It's that time again. It's time to start seeds for gardening this year. So we kick starting it off with starting seeds. Super exciting and super looking forward to all the different things that we're going to be able to eat and harvest. Can't wait. And some people think it's a little crazy because it's, they think it's too cold. I'm out here in my hat and coat and it is cold, but this is the time you want to start your seeds. Yep, the Bible even talks about it. There's a proverb that talks about <laughs> the one who's diligent getting out in the cold and get started and growing. And the lazy man says, I won't work because it's cold. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's cold, but we it's, t it's time to start our seeds and we are ready. Hope you guys are too. There's a number of common mistakes that a lot of people make with starting seeds. And one is, a lot of people actually wait too late to start their seeds. Yeah. And as a result of that, you're not getting the harvest that you want. You're getting your harvest later than you want, and you're not getting the full maximized harvest that you want from when your garden is producing. So that's one common mistake. Well, and for a market garden, if you're selling your produce, that puts you back behind people. And so you won't be able to sell as much and make as much from your garden. That's exactly right. And that was a mistake that we actually made in the past is yeah. starting our things too late. And then as a market gardener, you're like, wow, why does such and such have this? <laughs> well, ahead of me, I don't even have it yet. They have tomatoes already and like, ours are what? still tiny and green. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. so that's one common mistake. And another mistake that people make is starting too early, especially if you don't have the right tools and season extension tools. Uh, yeah. Starting too early can be a problem, especially for starting things like tomatoes. You start them indoors and then it's still too cold outside and you don't have an area to put them in to keep them from freezing. And then what do you do? Then you're starting to have problems with your tomatoes and you can even lose those tomatoes. So knowing when to start your seed comes from one experience and two learning from others. There's been a number of individuals that we have learned from throughout the year. And one of those is Curtis Stone, the urban farmer. And I learned from him a number of things about market gardening. And one is when to start seeds for a market garden. But we've also used a Clyde's planter in the Clyde's past. Planner. And uh, we've learned a lot just from trial and error on our own from yeah. just the hard knocks of yeah. gardening. Well, recently, our friends at Homesteaders of America created a really neat graphic for the month of January for, and this planner is really beneficial for whatever growing area region that you're in, and it can be helpful to anybody. They'll also be creating a planner for this month and the months ahead. So we'll provide their information for the Homesteaders of America in the show notes below. So make sure you check it out to find out what you can grow in your area. So based on that planner, as well as from experience, it's time to start our seeds. And besides, we recently got our seed order from Baker Creek. I'm super excited to start the seeds. And when you're starting seeds this early, you wanna make sure that you have a place that is suitable for your yeah. seeds to germinate and to grow as starts. We do a majority of what we grow in our garden as starting from seed to starts to transplants. And the reason why we do that is because one, it increases the germination rate and where we want our plants to grow. We wanna have our beds full of things growing. You can do direct sow, but at this time of year, there's not many things that we can direct sow no. right outside right now. So starting indoors gives us a jump start on the growing season. Those people with the last frost date in January and February, you can go ahead and direct sow. But if you have a lost last frost date like us around April 14th, um, that's a no go. Or after us, some people have a last frost date in June. So, uh, but right now we can start stuff inside. We do all of our starts in what we call our grow room. It's basically a big germination chamber, and you can also make a germination chamber out of an old freezer or refrigerator. There's actually plans for that online. Well, what exactly is a germination chamber? Because I'm sure there's some people out there asking, what is a germination chamber? Excellent question. A germination chamber is basically a chamber where you can start your seed and it is designed to start them at the perfect or ideal temperature and humidity, which increases the chances of that seed sprouting and growing. Does that answer the question? <laughs> so it's a box where you can control the humidity and the heat. Exactly. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so that will be where we are starting our seeds. And 
what we do is we have a wire shelf, a four foot wide wire shelf that has grow lights on them, shop lights, and I may even do a video on how to make one of these. And it has four shelves on it. So we're going to be starting based on the, the calendar or the planner from Homesteaders of America and our experience. We're going to be starting four different categories of seed. So we're going to be starting. She has on there herbs that are slow to grow. So we're going to be starting rosemary and stevia. But also on that same shelf, since we have a season extension te techniques and tools that we use here, like a greenhouse, which we're in, as well as low tunnels that we use, we're also going to start lettuce since we're able to start lettuce. And uh, we get a lot of our lettuce seeds. We get most of our seeds in general from Baker Creek. But our microgreen seeds we get from Todd Seeds. Mm -hmm. And we get our lettuce seeds, some from Baker Creek, but also we get some from Johnny Seeds. And another company that we really like that we recently found out about that has a type of seed similar to the Salanova lettuce seeds that we grow from Johnny Seeds is high mowing seed. They have an easy leaf lettuce that is really similar to the Johnny Seeds, but it is even more economical and I know that can be beneficial to yeah. a lot of you. So first we're going to be starting our lettuce seeds and before we do that I want to show you a couple things. We use tra our seed trays to start them in. Some of you use soil blocks but we found that seed trays and cell plugs work really really well for us. We just haven't had a lot of great experience Some people in the love those soil blockers, blockers but, but whenever you're planting hundreds and hundreds of seeds at a time the soil blockers for me it was hard to get the consistency right and and then it was just tiring to do so all of you that love them that's great but i'm gonna stick to my seed trays for now for our seed trays we really really love using our bootstrap farmer seed trays uh, we've used a number of other seed trays in the past but we have found that the bootstrap farmer trays really hold up well and really last you can get the the cheapos from the box stores yeah. and they don't even won't even last you a couple weeks if you're using right. them and then there's some others that you can buy online and they may last you a little bit longer but they're just not as sturdy and as tough as the bootstrap and we farmer have our trays. original bootstrap farmer trays that they're going on like four years something like that and yeah. i mean how often and we use them more than the average person because of the market garden so you know if you want something that lasts bootstrap farmer trays all the way and we'll leave the information for bootstrap mm -hmm. farmer these trays in the show notes below but we used a 1020 tray this is just a deep tray here which is the basic one to use and then we use a number of different cells and this is kind of where the soil blocker kind of will fail it will not be able to make one of the soil cell trays that i like to use is this 128 cell tray here and then we'll just take this these this plug these cells and put them right into the deep tray there and then we'll put our soil in which we're getting ready to do but this gives us a lot of plants guys this is 128 plants if all of them germinate correctly one which is a lot more than you're going to be able to get with your your soil blockers from a lot of time i will also use a 72 cell tray and we'll use that for for some of the other ones that we'll transplant that we want them to kind of come more and uh, have a more uh root ball root, a root ball that's more intact that's the yeah. word i was looking for intact so we're going to start off by starting our lettuce seeds here if you don't mind doing us the honor yeah, i can do that we're gonna fill up our tray here with the soil that we have here we did a video in the past explaining how to make your own do-it-yourself potting mix however i have found that just we just can't do it quite as efficiently and in bulk quantities that we need here so we got this soil here from Dirt Craft Organics, which is a company about two hours, about two and a half hours away from us. Uh, and we just really love the, the mix that they have and they've created. And it just, I found that it by far, it has the best German re germination rate of any potting mix that we have ever used. And we have a video tour in his facility too. So you can check that out. 
but you can try making your own potting mix or you can try to find somebody in your area who is good at it especially if you're doing it in large quantities yeah. you don't really want to spend a lot of time trying to make your own potting mix because some of the professionals can really do it much more efficiently but uh not discouraging because you can do it yourself if you're doing you don't have a big operation and, and you want to make your own potting mix you can do that so Lacey has her tray here filled up with the soil and we're pretty picky on what varieties of lettuce we use at this time of year and in the fall you can you have a little more flexibility in what lettuces that will grow because lettuce is a colder season crop however as you get to the warmer months you really want to be really even more selective on the seeds that you use because the heat will really alter the flavor of the lettuce will make it much more bitter and it's just not quite as pleasant. However, there are some varieties like the Salanova lettuce and the Easy Leaf lettuce from High Mowing Seed that do really well, even in the summer months. So, and it actually does what they do well in the colder months as well. But so we're gonna go ahead and start some Salanova seeds right now. One thing I like about these is that they're pelleted, which makes them a whole lot easier to sow. Because if you've ever sown lettuce seeds before, they are tiny so I like these better especially with having 128 cells there <laughs> yes <laughs> and you can use a drop seeder or a vacuum seeder however we just a lot of times use it do it by hand it's actually a, a great way to get your kids involved because a lot of times they want to help you seed stuff and for those of you who are interested in the varieties of seed that we like to use for lettuce I'll send those out in an email so you can just check out the show notes below if you haven't subscribed to our email list already and I'll send that out in the email so you guys can have all that. And I know some people are probably asking why are you only putting one seed per cell because I've heard you need to put two seeds. Well for these seeds they have a germination rate of 99% so I would rather just put one seed per cell and if they grow i don't have to divide them but if two seeds come up per cell then i would have to divide them and that just takes more time whenever we're planting them out in the garden yeah with that germination rate of the seed on top of the germination rate and possibility in our grow room and with the soil that we're using it's pretty pretty high <laughs> yeah of the chances that each of these seeds will start uh, on some of our other seeds and, and other plants that we grow, we do sow multiple for, uh, multiple seeds in those cells. So uh, just with the pelleted one here where it is higher chances of it germinating, we just put one in, but with other things we put more than one. And it's more expensive to be pelleted and you don't want to waste any either. So that's another factor to think about. And another thing that I recommend is when you're starting your tray to actually have some type of tray or some type of something to, to catch the excess soil that falls out of what you're using. Just so it helps you to control the mess so you're not just having a mess all over the place. So as you can see here as Lacey's doing this, they're just having some excess soil. So that would be falling out onto the table in other places without this. Or it would be wasted. Or Yeah, that's right. Or it would be wasted. Okay, so that's the red Salanova lettuce that we did. We're gonna do a tray of green lettuce, and then we're gonna move on to something else. Alrighty, so the second tray is done, and one of the things with lettuce, especially here running a market garden, is we grow a lot of lettuce, a lot of different greens to service our various customers. So from this point forward, we'll be growing more, starting more and more seeds of lettuce going forward. But we're starting just two trays for now. Next, we're gonna be moving on to our other green that we're gonna start, and that is celery. And we actually haven't grown celery before. Have any of you guys grown celery? Let us know in the comment section below. So it says uh, this is a longer time to, to germinate and grow. So uh, it'll be our first time, so we're gonna start it. And one of the things that I have noticed is seeing different people filling up trays and, and starting their seeds is everybody kind of has their own technique of filling up the cells here. So I'm going to show you 
Lacey has hers. I'm just gonna show you mine. Just slightly different. But like I said, everybody has their own. So fill it up. This part's supposed to be Just massage it on in. Wax on, wax off. Dirty in, dirt out. <laughs> Good to feel the dirt, to touch it. Body needs it. There's all kind of good stuff in here. There we go. That for another day. And then from there, what I like to do is I'll take another plug, same size plug, and then I'll just set it right on top, and that will kind of press down on it to make it a little bit easier. Where are you gonna put your seed? And we have two varieties of celery here. We have the Chinese white and the giant red. So we're going to actually try both of them. We'll do half and half. And uh, with starting seeds, I have learned that Lacey and Sayla are much better than me at putting these seeds in the tray. <laughs> if he seeds the tray of just le regular lettuce, you have like seven plants growing in one <laughs> cell. That's why I like the pelleted ones. I'm pretty heavy handed with some of the other seeds. You guys are much more delicate. It's because it takes longer and he's impatient. He's like, Hulk cake grab seed. <laughs> I'm done with this. Just throw all the seeds in there. Oh wow, look at these seeds. Oh, they're even, they're pretty small. So yeah, I would have challenges with that. <laughs> Big time. Those are tiny. Okay, grab beauty seed. Just give them here. <laughs> These are the type of seeds where you do put more than one per cell because you can't get just one. Or you drive yourself mad doing it like that. And when it comes to sowing seeds this small, you just do the best you can and then you can just thin them out. Because I mean, really, I just poured out a tiny, maybe pinch full of seeds in my hand and I've already done half a tray and I still have some to put back in the, in there. So you just have to do the best you can and hopefully you'll just end up with more than what you expect. Cause look here, I'm gonna pour them all out so you can see. You could probably do at least another two trays with just that many seeds. So yeah, that, that pack of celery from Baker Creek has a lot of seeds in there. All right, and we're just gonna set them down right here for now. And then once we're done with all of our trays, then we'll take them into the grow room. All right, for our last tray, we're gonna do some slow growing herbs to go right on the same shelf as our lettuces. And just a reminder, our wire shelf that we have in our grow room has four shelves on it. And on each of those shelves, you can fit four trays. So this is tray number four. And within this tray that we're gonna be using, we're gonna be doing oregano, thyme, and stevia. So you have any uses in mind for how we could use these delicious herbs well i use thyme and oregano a lot um especially thyme you're making that bone broth or your soups i love thyme and that stuff and i actually have some bone broth going right now um, on the stove but we're going to do these and stevia i will say stevia has in the past for me a very low germination rate so um not many seeds come in this packet i'll show you and they are tiny tiny super tiny so and these are pelleted in the past I haven't used pelleted seeds for stevia I look there that's it there's one that's broken open that is how big a stevia seed is and this stevia is great to sweeten teas we like to do a lot of herbal teas around here and uh, so that's why I want to grow it and save it for next winter too. All right, so that's one of the shelves completed. Next, on our other shelves, we're gonna put 
leeks and onions on one shelf we'll do four trays of that and then we're going to do tomatoes and we primarily do indeterminate tomatoes and those are your tomatoes that are vining so that way we can do hard pruning on them and one of the tomatoes that we're going to be growing this year for the first time we're really 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 excited about and uh, tell them about that well i mentioned it in a previous video but it's the tomatoes that uh, we got from Teresa Salatin when we were at Polyface. She had these huge tomatoes growing and I asked about them and they are her grandmothers. And uh, so she let me have a couple tomatoes so I could save the seeds and I've done that. So I already have one whole tray of those going, um, but you know, we could probably add some more. And one of the things I like about tomatoes like that is that's an heirloom variety of seed but it also has a family story and yeah. connection to it, which is pretty awesome. And then on the last shelf that we're going to be doing, we're going to have peppers, eggplant, and rosemary. And there's a reason why we are doing the shelves this way, and I will explain that in just a little bit. But before that, rosemary. Rosemary is good in so many different things. You use it in all kinds of different dishes, but you can even actually oh, yeah. make tea from rosemary, and I've done that before. It's pretty tasty and helpful for you, too. Well, we're going to plant these seeds. All right, since you do the cooking primarily, which onions do you prefer? Red onions or the, what is it, white onions is the other one? Yellow. <laughs> there yellow. are white onions too. <laughs> I probably most use yellow onions, um, but, you know, some people will say red onions are for in raw or good in raw and stuff. And you know what? I'm like, just use what you got. And if it works, it works. So that's what I do. There we go. I'm not going to be fussy about it. If you need an onion, use whatever onion you got. I've gone and cut wild green onions out of my yard before. There you go. A lot of people don't know that. You can actually harvest the wild onions that they grow out in the yard. A lot of people just think it's this grass. You cut it with your grass, but you can just go outside and cut it and harvest it. And if it has been rainy, normally you can pull them up and get the bulb too. But if not, just cut the tops off and yep. use that. Especially good if it's springtime and they're tender. But you can use it anytime. Yeah, I mean, one of our kids likes to go harvest it and just eat them raw. <laughs> but another thing that a lot of people don't know about onions is they can be transplanted too. And there's other root cops like beets, believe it or not, you can transplant those. So after we finished seeding all the trays, I got the grow room set up, turned on the heat, and turned on the lights for the grow lamps. Then the kids joined in and helping us move all the trays to inside here in our Is that grow Mike room. Or cat man? <laughs> and as I mentioned earlier, I can fit four trays on each of the shelves. And with our various types of seeds, since warm air rises, the plants, the seeds that require warmer temperatures to germinate, we stuck them at the top, as well as put some humidity domes on top of those that require even more heat. And then, so up here we have our rosemary, which requires pretty high temperature, and our peppers and eggplant. And then next on our shelf here, we have our tomatoes. And then on the next shelf, we have our onions and leeks. And one of the things I forgot to mention about the onions is we decided to go with mostly bulb onions for right now. We've done scallions, green onions in the past, and... Uh, one of the things that I learned from farmer John Jackson is he grows the bulb onions, but he then he cuts the tops off of them. So to have those as green onions and then you have your bulb. So I'm like, yeah, why, why don't we do that too? <laughs> and then at the bottom, we have our lettuce and our celery. 
requires because they don't require as much heat so they're down below where the air is cooler in here so that's the system that we have set up here there's uh this is a a sample of what you could probably do in your basement or in a room in your house just get one of these wire shelves and uh, you can get set up with growing microgreens seed starts and a number of different plants and it can really give you a jump start on growing getting your growing season started earlier as well as increase your germination rate for your plants so I'm super excited and can't wait to see these tiny seeds germinate and begin to sprout and grow and guys I can't impress upon you all enough and I've mentioned this a number of times in other videos but start growing your own food and I think this year it's important maybe now more than ever with there being so much instability uncertainty in our food system in our country in our world it's important that we do what we can to take care of ourselves and our families as our as people as leaders continue to make decisions that are bad and decisions that are the direction of evil choosing a different direction it is only going to become more and more unstable and be harder for normal people like you and me but we need to do our part whatever decisions they make we still have to eat our families still have to eat and we need to make sure that we are doing what we can to increase our own personal and family food security by growing more food and at the same time making sure that we connect connect with with God connect with one another and make sure that we are going in the right direction ourselves Despite whatever direction the world is going in, make sure that we are going in the right direction. So I'm gonna encourage you guys, now more than ever, take growing seriously to grow, grow food, grow in character, and grow in love. See you next time.